Oh, here we go. I think it is. Can you see Boom. me now? There it is. All right. Let me get back to this full screen. I'm on my girlfriend's laptop, so. <laughs> all good, man. All good. All right. I should probably just leave it like that. Yeah, man. It's good. good. Look, dude, thanks for, thanks for doing this, first of all. Oh, no problem at all. No problem. Yeah. Um, anytime that I like to always, I like to bring a, a variety of guests on this show. Uh, oh, yeah. Of all, all different, you know, what's something that's cool about uh, hunting, fishing, outdoors, recreation, whatever you want to call it, is there's like, I don't know, we've had, you're, you're the first uh, football player we've had on here, but we've had UFC oh, wow. fighters, we've had, uh, we had a country music band on here a few weeks ago. We have, there's all kinds I'm of everybody. Different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So, awesome. uh, what's what's this time of year like for you? Is it, are you, are you working too much yet or is that not really kicked off yet? All right. Well, so, you know, we started back up, uh, at the end of the season last year, you know, you get probably about the month of nine to playoffs, nine to postseason play. You probably get probably the month of January, February, half of March off and towards the end of March. We come here, we have like a uh, phase one of OTAs and mini camp and everything like that. It's pretty laid back. You know, you, uh, you're only in the building for a couple hours, you know, you go in probably five or run, we're, we're there for like, two or three hours max, something like that. So you, you still had a whole day, still to spend time with the family and friends. And then um, that pretty much goes all the way up till, till May and uh, mid-June. Beginning of June, we have our last mini camp. And after that, we're on like a break, you know, get to travel around with your family and friends, go do all your off, all your fun off-season stuff, things like that. And then after that, you know, end of July, that's when that's when camps roll around and it's full swing from there. Yeah, so you're 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 getting close then. It's about to kick off for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, getting close. Actually, uh, this Friday is when we have to report. So you know, I'm trying to enjoy these last few days. Uh, parents gonna come in from Alabama, spend the last few days with me and stuff like that. So you know, just get ready to go. Yeah, I hear you, man. Let's um, what's I, I want to backtrack a little bit before I get to that. So so All right. uh, well, like so you're from Alabama originally, correct? Yep, yep. Small town uh called Montevallo, Alabama. Uh. What South Central, Central, middle of nowhere, put it like that, uh, in between yeah. Birmingham and Montgomery. You know, small town, uh, very small town. Graduated high school, like sixty-five people. So yeah, you know, come from come from nothing, come from nothing. So I understand, it, man. Made me who I am. So yeah, for sure. So um, like let me. So you come from you know being in Alabama, growing up in a town like you talked about, to now yeah. um, spending as much time in Arizona as you have to. What's, oh, what's yeah. how much, what's that like for you having to, like, how much do you get to bounce back to Alabama and see your family? Is, is that, is that hard to, was that hard to, to deal with? Or was that, how much of a learning curve was that? Oh man, it was very hard, you know, cause all right. So starting out, you know, started out in one of Alabama, like I said, and uh, I actually went to play college football at the University of Cincinnati in right, Ohio, yep. you know, first time flying an airplane was going up there and everything. So you're talking about a culture shock going from, going from the woods to the city and everything like that. You know, it took a while. Yeah. It's a lot of me to get used to. I mean, I was telling my parents, like, hey, this ain't for me. I'm coming back home and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, other than that, got used to it, you know, found a place I could fish and hunt up there and stuff. And then uh, got drafted out here to Arizona uh, last year's draft. Last year was my first season here. And, uh, you know, I really didn't get that much chance to uh, shoot back home for real, you know. Um, coming out of college and straight to training. And then straight from training, you got the draft and you go to mini camp and rookie mini camp and all that stuff. And then during the season, you know, I'm saying it's like the longest season of your life. So I didn't get to go back home for real. So probably like our last game is like December, December 30th, you know, and uh, I ended actually ended up having a foot surgery last year. So I went up to Green Bay, Wisconsin, had surgery. And I just, I shot back home. And, you know, that was my first time being home in a long time. Wow. A long time. Yeah. How old are you, man? Uh, Just turned 24 in May. So like, I, I promise you, man, I'll be, like I'm going to get to talking hunting eventually, but this is just so intriguing <laughs> for talking. me. You're so. Good. So, like, there's – I don't know how many ki- – I mean, I wonder – I don't know what the number would be for, like, kids in America that grow up watching football and playing football, right. wanting to be in the NFL. Like, how – like, what in the world does that feel like when you found out that you got drafted? Man, it, it, it was surreal, man. I'm, I'm telling you, like, I was that kid growing up. You know, I'm in the heart of Alabama, Auburn football, you know, living there yeah. and seeing players go to the NFL and stuff. You know, you have that dream, but you never really like, oh man, like this actually happened. I didn't think about that. Like my senior year, I started getting getting a lot of attention. You know, teams and stuff like that. You know, draft stops started rising. Right. Like I didn't think it and stuff. So you know, uh, it didn't really hit me until draft day. You know, I was uh, supposed to be like a, 
I was projected fourth to fourth through sixth round. So, you know, I didn't get drafted the seventh round. So, you know, we're sitting there, we're sitting there. And it's only a couple more picks in the draft left. You know, I felt I had a good visit out here to Arizona. And then, you know, I saw they had another pick left. And, you know, uh, when I got that phone call, I saw they had a pick left. You know, that's when it that's when it really hit me, like those childhood dreams, you know, growing up playing football yeah. with all your buddies and stuff in the backyard and all that. And then that's when it that's when it that's when it hits you hits you real. So, yeah, it was good. It was it's good. got to, man. That's crazy cool. I mean, because, you know, what I'm talking like so many kids grow up thinking about that, you know, got these NFL aspirations and then so few people oh, yeah. actually get to do it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's a small margin of guys that you get to live out that dream. You know, I told myself on draft that I wasn't going to cry because, you don't know, because, you know, you're like, oh, man, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man. You know, I'm not going to cry. You know, it's time, it's time to go to work. But, you know, when you get that call, you know, just you just have a flashback that quick of all those growing up, all those times growing up and everything. You know, when you get that call, that's it's just it's just a life changing moment. Yeah, man. Man. It's a, uh, I, I mean, one like I don't know. Congratulations to you, man. I mean, that's a that's all. Awesome I appreciate. Story. I appreciate. It. I appreciate. I mean, so obviously, much. something like that doesn't come without a whole lot of work. So I, I know you uh -huh. have to work. Oh that. man. Oh yeah, work. You know, even the work, the work that you got put in, you, you, nobody knows about. Nobody's watching. Nobody right. sees. So that's that's really, really that's really what it's all about. Yeah, for sure, dude. For sure. So, let's kick the topic around a little bit. Uh, growing up, how, were you were you like how 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 early were you introduced into the hunting and fishing? Oh man, real early, real early. You know, it's both sides of my family. You know, big big hunter and fish. You know, uh, my granddad worked for the Forestry Commission out, uh, down there in South Alabama, uh, small okay. place Evergreen. So yeah, yeah, I was, I was always down there in Evergreen with him. You know, so he gets off work. We grabbing those Zebco fishing poles. You know, we going we going fishing and stuff like that. The good thing about him working for the Forestry Commission, you know, he knew a he knew a lot of people in the business and stuff. So all the, all everywhere he was working, so he always found the found the good secret spots and stuff. So, you know, just being around being around them, even my dad. You know, he was a scrub tech. You know, he he worked a lot, but he he um he worked with a lot of doctors that um that hunted and stuff. And those guys had to I had to say they got me into it pretty big too. So yeah, that's really where it started at really where yeah. it started. So tell tell me this. This is always a fun question. Like yeah. if you can think back to like your, it doesn't even have to be hunting. It can be fishing. You know, whatever. Like, right. like, 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 give me like a, like a, a first outdoors hunting, fishing memory where you were like, okay, I'm hooked on this stuff. Oh man. I got two of them. So the first right. one, was, uh, we had a snow day in Alabama. When I say snow day, I mean like an inch or two inches of snow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my dad, like I said, he was working in the hospital and, um, one of his, uh, doctor friends, he actually, uh, gave, gave me one of his old bear, bear bows, you know, I was shooting them big, thick, uh, Eastern Lumen yeah. bears. You know, I could yeah. push hauls, do everything with those. So, uh, found out how to shoot it that was my first ever bow actually and um my dad's uh swore him now he's gonna take me home we got home from work but he was uh he was a little late getting home from work you know the weather shuts everything down in alabama so it's just me my mom my brother and sister at the house and i always like to check the windows uh we had we got some cubs we buying outside in our side yard and i would always right. see, we always see deer popping up walking through and stuff so uh I'm laying there in the house watching my underwear, and I actually remember I was laying there in my underwear watching uh, Buckmasters, and I was like, someone tell me to go check this window. <laughs> Everybody's gnashing and everything, and I'm the only one up. You know, I'm mischievous. It's all get out. And I look out, and I see a couple of does out there in the cousin. I say, man, but my dad told me don't go outside. And I was just sitting there thinking, and this, you know, I went, ran back to the room, got the bow case, opened up the bow, and I kid you not, man, on the front porch of my underwear, rare bag, uh, stuck a doe, <laughs> gut shot is all get out. All Oh, my dad, I'm like, where are you at? And I was like, I just shot a deer. He's like, I told you not to go outside. I told you not to go outside and everything. I said, yeah. I just saw it. It was on. I was on the front porch. He said, well, did you hear it? And I said, yeah, I see blood. And he he told me to stay where I was. You know, I'm. I forget what grade I was in. I was definitely in elementary school. He's like, just stay where you are. I'll be home in a little bit. You know me. I mean, that was my first deer with a boat. So my heart's racing and everything. So I I put right. on all my. Sh I go outside. I start start trying to track and everything. And I I see her. I jump up. I push her and everything. And uh, man. Tracked it forever. My dad got home. I told you just to wait. We saw where she had bed down a couple of times, and uh, we tracked it for a long time. And uh, that's when I found out about the deer going to the cold water for the first time. Yeah. And we got there, got to the creek. That's where the blood trail stopped. Never, never saw it again. So you know, yeah. I mean, it was a good moment at all. But you know, learning experience, the best day of my life still. So you know, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. The new Primo's Trigger Stick Gen 3 adjusts your desired height with just one hand and the pull of a trigger. The new Quick Detach Yoke System with integrated lock makes it easier than ever to switch from gun to optics and back again. Smoother panning action helps you rotate, scan, and find your perfect shot. Available in monopod, bipod, tripod, 
and in short and tall models. Available now at Primos.com. And for a limited time only, get free shipping on all orders of $75 and more. Check it out. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the next. No. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I, just, I was going to say, I was going to throw in, like, I think, especially with bow hunting, everyone's, oh. like, early bow hunting career no matter what age, when there's always a, there seems to always be a steep, steep learning curve. With oh, it, it's some, it's some type of story to it. Yeah, you start off bow hunting, like I said, and um, like I said the second time, it was an old, uh, old hickory tree had a little V in it, and I was like, man, I want to start going hunting in the woods. So this is Saturday morning. Uh, my yeah. parents like, I was a little older, didn't have a tree stand, anything like that. Grabbed me an old two by four, went and nailed it, nailed it to the tree. And I'm sitting up there, I, I uh, shimmied up the tree, and I'm sitting up up there probably like. 10, 12 foot in the tree, sitting on a piece of two by four. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have a big butt up there in the first place. And uh, <laughs> I'm out there falling asleep up there. And I'm rocking back and forth, winds blowing, no scent, no scent control, nothing like that. Just this young boy going out there and um, right. sitting there falling asleep. When I wake up, eyes is open, and a doe walks up the hill. And I kid you not, she's probably like 12 yards away from me. She's just looking at me. My heart's raised. I'm like, what do I do now? Then then, then playing none of that out, and that's the first time I ever heard a deer blow at me and everything. <laughs> I didn't even know they, I didn't even know they did it. I didn't even know yeah. they did. So she blew and stomped at me, and it like a chill just went over my body. Like, what did that deer just do? <laughs> like, I ran, ran back in the house, left the bow in the woods, and got my dad. And, like, it made some type of noise, like it screamed at me. He's like, it blew at <laughs> me. Like, like, where were you sitting? At? And I was like, right there. So that's uh, after he saw I was doing that, that's when I got my first little ladder stand, and everything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I did it all. Did it yeah. all. That's funny, man. I feel because you know I grew up in Central Mississippi, so mm -hmm. you know right there, Alabama and Mississippi, as far as like the the terrain and the country you're hunting in, a lot of it's pretty similar. So, pretty same. Oh yeah. So a lot of those like those stories you're telling, I can relate to like so so much. Like I have a, one of our one of our guys who works in the video department now. He's from Minnesota, where they get like a lot of snow, right? Oh yeah. And so oh, yeah. I think it was one last year or the year before we had one of those little inch or two inches of snow like you were talking yeah. about and you know yeah. how they do down here they start shutting the schools down they're like nobody drive oh, get crazy. off the road oh yeah everybody going crazy <laughs> yeah and the boy from minnesota is like man y'all are crazy this isn't even snow <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. flourish for us yeah 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 we just don't ever see it but then you know i can think of it man i mean like some of my first bow hunts were in like these little bitty rickety ladder stands built out of two Some by fours and yep oh yeah I can remember the first, you know, couple times deer walking, you know, within bow range of me, and I'd just be up there shaking so much, my my arrows rattling inside my wrist, just tick 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 oh, tick tick, tick, you know. Oh, oh yeah, man. You get all the feels going and everything. Yeah, well, that's part of it, man. I mean, that that excitement's what makes it what it is. It's what keeps it coming back. That's what makes it so addicting as well. That's yeah. What makes it so addicting. Yeah, yeah. I was telling a couple of my buddies, you know, it's hard right now. They asked me. You know how do you how do you do it uh, do hunting and football and everything at the same time you know we got we played I mean NFL season is from you know August to, August to January that's when, that's when your prime hunting is and stuff so you know you tell those guys man it's hard it's hard not to think about it during the season and stuff but you know you gotta stay you gotta stay focused on ball for the time being yeah do you, is there is there any time for you to like slip away get a hunt in every now and then uh, I mean. It was much easier when I was uh, when I was in college in uh, Cincinnati. You know, you got Ohio, Indiana, all that right. Kentucky right there. You know, I met a couple, a lot of good people out there. Let me hunt their land and stuff. So you know, that was that was easy. But, you know, out here in Arizona, you know, I mean, winter time it's it's still 80, 80, 90 degrees. You know, it's kind of hard to get away. So you know, I know we have a a bye week right before Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving this year. So you know, I'm trying to trying to set something up. But, you know, still yeah. like I said, remain remain focused on ball at the same time. So you know, you got to try and sneak away any chance you get. Yeah. Well, if you have a bye week near Thanksgiving, that'd be in November. You can run up to the Midwest, you know. Hey, that that's 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 what I want to do. That's what that's what's in my mind right now. I'm trying to get in contact with some with some of the right people up there and stuff. You, yeah. find, you know, get in get yeah. in a good spot up there. Yeah. Well, here. after this, after we get through recording this, I've got some good friends around, you know, up here in Missouri and stuff, where you can get over the counter tag. Some good folks I could hook you up with. Oh man, don't tell yeah. me that. I'll be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> I, will, I will be. I will be there in a heartbeat. Book a plane yeah. ticket so quick. So yeah, I, man, I can only imagine is because I'm like me. I count myself very, I don't love, very, very blessed, very, very fortunate because, you know, I get, I mean, granted, you know, what we do is, I mean, it's a job, but I get to hunt, you know, I get to go all the time. So, but like, I can right. imagine like if I, you know, someone like you that loves hunting as much as you do, 
you have to put all this focus towards football. I can imagine it's every now and then you start drifting, that mind starts drifting towards the woods. Man, I'm telling you, it's it's hard. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, you kind of get depression. You know, I got a, uh, one of my buddies, uh, me and him hunt together every time we uh, every time we get he uh, plays out here, Cajun guy from Louisiana. And uh, you know, last year, I mean, it's hard. You, I mean, we'll be just right down the sideline, and we're like, man, what what we would do to be in a tree stand right now and stuff like yeah. that. You know, our last season, you know, it didn't go as well. I think we only came out like three or two wins. So you know, I mean, it's a long season, and you still gotta like try and try to focus. I mean, we we hit adversity like that. Is you know, it's kind of kind of easy to get trapped, sidetracked, start thinking about the woods and think yeah. about what everybody's on, see what all they're killing, what all's in the ground and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine, man. I, I, I got a, um, a friend of mine, um, Logan Cook, he plays for the, for the Jaguars. He's, okay. He was going to, he's, he's kind of doing the same thing. He's going with, actually he's going with a buddy of mine in Missouri. Cause he talks about the same, same thing. Cause when I first talked to him, I was like, I can't relate to that. You know, like what y'all are doing right. about not, having so much time doing other things that he's having to sneak away for a week and go hunting. But I can only imagine, but there is, I mean, I can imagine like an upside to that. You, do you, you might have a little bit more, more time to turkey hunt or no. Oh yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's the big thing, you know, but this year, you know, the only bad thing about me, our second last game of the season, you know, we're playing the Rams. I'm always made through the end of the season. I actually had a hunt set up in, uh, up in Illinois, had a hunt set up, you know, I was thinking about that, you know, I was just ready to get through the season. End up, uh, end up uh, tearing a ligament in my foot, so that shut me down. Shut my whole hunt, hunting season down, and everything last year. Yeah. So, you know, I was in a boot in a wheelchair for like two and a half months. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm in there. I remember testing my buddies before that game. Matter of fact, I was on, on the way to the stadium. I was on Facetime trying to tell them where to hang all my stands and stuff at. Then after the game, I'm in. I'm hurt. I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the X-ray room. I test them. I was like, man, hey, take those down. I got to put some ground blinds up and stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> you know. I get up there, and the only first thing I ask the doctor when I got out of surgery, will I be able to go in the woods and hunt? And he's like, absolutely not. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, you just, you know, you don't know who I am or something like that, you know. <laughs> first day I got back home to Alabama, I was hobbling out there in the woods and stuff, you know. Bad decision, by the way. Very yeah. bad decision, you know. You yeah. end up falling asleep out there in the woods. I was still looking for surgery, you know. So, you just got to – had to get it how I could, you know. Missed all, missed out all turkey season. Had to come back out here to Arizona and do rehab and stuff. So. Yeah. I get it, man. Like, like why you say it was like you, like you said yourself, you know, it was a bad idea, but at the oh, same yeah. time you can't not go. Like you got to try it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I went home to my parents' house. And my mom was like, you know, you don't need to be going out there. You're not going out there. You're not going out there. My dad didn't even waste his bread. Like tell him, he just told my mom, he's like, you know, he's going to go out there, right? You know, four thirty in the morning, I'm out there. You hear the walk, walker going through the house and stuff. I'm just trying to get out there in the woods. So <laughs> <laughs> still did it still did it felt felt accomplished felt the big yeah. accomplishment. yeah man that's how you know you're ate up with it if you hobbling out there you know with a bad foot just because you got to get out in the woods i get it though believe me and every away somehow yeah but and everyone that, that listens to this podcast will know what you mean because that's what okay. that's what we all do we're, we're ate up with this stuff absolutely. makes sense absolutely yeah so um what about do you, do you have any like teammates out there in arizona that share kind of the same you know fondness for hunting with you or are you kind of a island out there man it was it was just me for real to the, um I mean, you know we got a guy from uh we got from georgia over in georgia um outside the suburb of atlanta area you know he duck hunts a lot so you know me and him ended up playing beside each other a lot last year and then like i said i got my guy from down louisiana and that's actually who i went on the uh we went up to north arizona and shot some uh doll sheep like a month or two ago so yeah you know, me and me and him, it's, it's good. I'm telling you, it's good to find somebody else that's, that's eat up with it like I am. You know, you just sit there and talk about it. You feel like you just went through a whole therapy session when you get done talking about hunting and stuff in the middle of the season and everything. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Tell me, like, uh, doll sheep, how, how was that? That's something I've never done. Man, it was crazy. So uh, so this is how it really happened. We were actually, um, I was just scrolling on Instagram. You just see those ads and everything. And uh, I saw this place called Blue, Ro- Blue Rooster Hunting Ranch up in North Northeast Arizona. I was like, man, I need to check this out. Go shoot some. Uh, they have a lot of pigs and hogs and stuff up there. So I'm like, man, let's check this out. Let's go uh, go there and shoot some sheep. You know, message uh, shoot some pigs. And I met shot them and message on Instagram. It was like, hey, yeah, two weeks. We got a date open. So we get up that morning. You know, I go outside, start shooting my boat, just trying to get trying to get uh get a couple shots. And it's real windy. So you know, I'm like, yeah, I gotta get used to shooting in the wind. And uh, so the guys and all of them pull up and they uh they're looking at some um uh, some pictures they had and they had these rams i was like oh man let me see those again and they sh- start showing us pigeons i turn around look at my buddy jerry and i was like hey man we may not be shooting pigs we not be we may we not may not be going after it so um 
end up being a, end up being a ram hunt and everything. So you know, gotta um, gotta put a good stock on those. And those took a uh, took a while, took a while to get down and stuff. I mean, it was yeah. it was fun. Got the something else to go up on the wall, so it was a good time. Yeah, that's gotta be. You know, I, I'm thinking. You know, for your boy from central Alabama hunting deer and turkeys and stuff his whole life. Next thing he's looking at a doll sheet. Probably had to be pretty crazy. Oh yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. It's all that flat terrain. You ain't got no trees to get behind, no cover or anything like that. You know. It's, yeah. I mean, I, when I tell you it's a lot of stalking, it's, it's unreal. You're going up and down, climbing up rocks and everything just just for one dog sheep. But, you know, I mean, that's that's just a thrill to put in. And, you know, we're out there filming and stuff that day. So yeah. it's even harder with it. Harder with it. I never really hunted that much with a, with a cameraman and stuff. So, you know, trying to, trying to put a stalk on with a, with a camera crew and everything like that, that's just, that just adds to it, adds to the adrenaline and everything. Yeah, it, it definitely adds another factor. Yeah, I don't believe me. I, yeah, I know that. Have you ever um... – I wonder, have you ever gotten into any upland hunting, like bird hunting, quail, or pheasant, or anything? So just really, you know, just really starting to get back, get uh, get a duck hunting. Now that I got more, now that I know more guys to do it. You know, I re- didn't really know that many people that did. You know, some of the uh, older men in my family did. Uh, I mean, back, back when I was back when I was a little kid and everything. But like, I mean, my buddies growing up, we were always like just deer, deer and turkey and rabbit. You know, all that other stuff. Nobody really got into duck hunting. But now, like I said, I mean, me mean more people that do it and stuff. So. Yeah. Season, playing again, playing again, dub line, good bit. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only reason I'm saying is like, um, I was thinking, of, you know, maybe another, you know, another opportunity for you being out there in Arizona is I, I didn't get into like quail or pheasant hunting or, or any of that until just this past November. One of it, the, the, my friend that works with me from Minnesota's into it, and really? he was talking about he made a trip to Arizona just to go quail hunting, and because he said there's all kinds of opportunity out there. Oh yeah, they got some good, got some good quail, quail hunting. Actually, um. First, like I said, first time I had some guys hit me up to go quail hunting. I'm like, man, never did, never did this before. So, you know, might want to try and get it in before camp. Probably won't be able to, but uh, for sure, for sure next year would definitely be, definitely be hammering them down. Yeah, it's a blast, man. They eat, ooh, they eat so good. Really? Yeah. Really? Cool. Yeah. They're, I mean, sure, you like, they're kind of like doves. Yeah, similar t- okay. Similar, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar taste to a dove, Um, but... I don't, it's just I don't, I enjoyed it because like the, the, my hardest struggle with deer hunting is sitting still, like I'm not oh, yeah. you know, s- sitting still for that long. Which like quail, oh, yeah. that's kind of why I like turkey hunting as much as I do because you're always you More know re- maneuvering and all that stuff. Right, right. But quail hunting, you know, it's like just you and some buddies and the dogs, and you can talk and you're walking and you're flushing and you're shooting a lot. It's just, it's a good Be time. Be loud as you want to, is less less pressure and everything, more relaxed, yeah. more relaxed scene and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if your oh, yeah. if your buddy's missing a lot, you can make fun of him. You know, it's just a good time oh, for everybody. Fun of it. That's that's something that's gonna come with it every time, every single time. <laughs> yeah, man, man. Um, goodness, dude. I, like again, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here. I'm glad I was able to catch you before you had to. You know, I mean, like I said, if I'd have waited too much longer, you wouldn't have been able to do it. You'd have been in camp. Oh yeah, man. That's yeah. Would have been in camp right around the corner and after that it's full swing you know it's def- definitely good you call me this time you know i don't do anything nowadays uh this time of year just going to working out in the morning sit here watch the outdoor channel sports channel go to you different youtube hunting videos and just sit here all day you know got my dog here got the got the grill so you know just just trying to kill time while i can i understand man i understand well look man you're, you're a good guy and i like i like seeing good people succeed so man sure. I'll, yeah, all all the best to you, and and thank you for coming on this show. And uh, man, we'll have to we'll have to stay in touch. I'd like to, you know, if you if you get have a successful, you know, if you get to sneak up to the Midwest and and kill something, we can know about it. Maybe we can link up for something during turkey season if you aren't. Oh, definitely. You know, if you're able to, definitely. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Definitely got to, you know, just praying, pray, good Lord, have a good season this year. You know, stay healthy and this off season, get it on in the woods. You know, that's 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 part of you know, worry about ball and then, you know. Next part of the year, you know, it's time to hit the woods. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Well, man, again, I, I think we're, yeah, let's wrap, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I won't hold you much longer. And, uh, but yeah, dude, thanks for coming on guys. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Corey, you are officially the first, uh, Skype podcast we've done. So you can hang, you can hang your hat on that. <laughs> hey, it's an honor. It's an honor for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. I'm, I'm for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Well, yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you always for listening to the Speak the Language podcast. Thank you, Corey. No problem. Thank you.